Right, let's look at using execute SQL task to read multiple rows into SSIS variables. Uh, first, maybe we should say it's not usually a great idea to use execute SQL task to read large result sets for processing within SSIS. To deal with large result sets, you would typically use a data flow task containing a bunch of transforms. But execute SQL task can be a good way of dealing with relatively small result sets. Maybe the result set is a short list of people we need for some sort of admin processing. Uh, maybe we need to create a new account for each person, for example. OK, let's start by looking at the result set we're going to read. Just bring in a management studio. Um, here's the select. It's just a two table select, uh, which produces a result set of 10 rows, uh, four columns of person information. So I'll just put this out of the way. Our execute SQL task is going to need a variable to land the result set into. So let's make that. Um, let's call it v for variable v result set. Um, won't worry too much about the scope, we'll just keep it at a package level. Data type has to be object. And there we go. We can close this. And we can configure our execute SQL task. Um, result set. We definitely want a result set. And we want a multiple row result set. So we want a full row, a full result set. Um, connection type. Uh, OLADB. We could use ADO.NET and for this example there wouldn't be any difference in the remaining configurations. So we can stick with OLADB. The connection manager, we've got one handy. Select that. The SQL statement. I'll just bring the box up and I'll just copy in the select statement we were looking at earlier. There it is, um, two tables select. OK to that. And that's our general tab set up. No parameters to do in this example. Uh, the results set. Um, need one of those, definitely. We need the result name to be zero. We start off as zero. If you've got multiple results sets, it would go not one, two. Um, so we've got one result set, zero there and the variable name, um, it needs to be an object type variable. We've only got one defined and so it's come up automatically uh, the, the result set. So we can OK that and that should be our execute SQL task configured. At the moment we're configured to land our 10 row result set into one single object variable. But at some point we want to be able to go through the individual rows and read the individual column values. And the easiest way to do this is to create a variable for each column and use a for each loop container to go through the result set and load up the variables for each row as it goes. Right, let's make those variables for each of the column values. Um, but let's just use the magic of video editing to save some time. And here we have our four new variables, one for each of the columns in the results set, given appropriate data types, as you can see, all ready to get loaded. So we can close our variable window. And now to configure the for each loop container. Let's join it up and go in and configure it. And to go to the collection and we need to tell it that the enumerator is going to be the for each ADO enumerator. The enumerator configuration he wants to know the ADO object source variable. The source for this looping is going to be our object variable which we've called the result set. Uh, the enumeration mode, there's only one result set, so we just want rows in the first table. Uh, variable mappings, these are should be in the same order as the, the column uh, in which the columns occur. 
So the first column value that we see on the select line is the person ID, index 0. And then the surname is the second column in the select statement. And then it goes on. Uh, date of birth. And finally, the contracted weekly hours. And there we have it. So we can OK that and we should be ready to give it a test. We could do with a breakpoint in the for each loop container so that we can see the values as it uh, iterates. So if we break at the beginning of every iteration of the loop that will give us a chance to have a look at the variable values as the looping is going on through the object variable. So we're OK with that and then we begin execution and it's caught on the first iteration. Uh, we've got a watch window come up, but there's nothing to look at at the moment. We'll just bring up the variables, and then if we highlight the column variables that we're interested in, we can drop those into our watch window, like that. And we can see that the first person, first row, is showing up as Person Smith. And that looks good. We could just remind ourselves what we're expecting to see. If I uh, bring the Management Studio back and run the select, we should see Smith and Hedge and Yang as the first three rows. I'll just move this out of the way again. And if we go on to the next iteration up to Smith, Sure enough, there's hedge. Uh, it goes red to show that the value's changed. Uh, and then we should get Yan. So there we go. It's going through the rows, dealing with them one, one at a time, and loading up the variables with the column values. So that looks good. There's only 10 rows in this result set, so we can quickly whiz through them. Um, three gone. That's the fourth. Fifth. 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, and that's it. And one more to finish it off. Done. So that test looked OK. Let's finish the debugging. And there you go. Of course, in real life, you'd probably have, well, you would have something in the for each loop container. Um, perhaps something like a script task, um, which might be reading those variables for each row and then carrying out some processing, um, maybe creating some accounts, uh, something of that sort. Okay, so that was execute SQL task to read um, multiple row result sets into SSIS variables. Thank you for watching.